Okay, so basically what's happening here is that I don't know what I'm doing with this channel anymore. Um, it is March like 8th or something. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what day it is, but um, I've only uploaded one video this entire year. And it was an unscripted, um, improv thing that I did a week ago today, just with no planning or anything. So I realized that, um, if I don't do something like that again, then, I mean, this whole year could just go by without me uploading anything. So, um, I, I had an emergency meeting with all of the executives at Sir Chance a lot, and we, we decided that we needed to create something that is easy to edit, but also is more entertaining than the taxi driver review. Oh, there I'm... Hello? Hello? <laughs> it's... Hello? <laughs> so basically what I've decided to do is kind of combine Letterbox Lottery with um, those sort of unscripted in-depth reviews of cool movies. So what I have here is a list of the top 10% of the films that I've seen according to Letterboxd. Um, I, I like this list a lot, it's a cool list. Um, if you've ever sort of wanted recommendations from me, just instead, I, instead of the top 50, because that's sort of personal to my taste, look at this list, because I think uh, you can definitely find a bunch of cool stuff on there. But basically, an idea that I had was to go through this list on the channel um, over several weeks, um, just doing each video 10 films at a time. Just going from chronological order, we're gonna talk about every single thing on this list. Just do like a couple sentences on each, just sort of a brief overview. Do this like expansive series of just um, basically the entire history of cinema. And I'm gonna talk you guys through it. I'm gonna talk you through it and explain why each of these is a good movie. And since the list would continue to grow, it would just sort of be an, an ongoing series forever and ever which I still think it's kind of cool, like doing 10 films and each sort of represents a um, block like in cinema history because it's all in chronological order. But um, I think that's way too ambitious. <laughs> um, so I, I got this idea because I have only ever had one good idea on this channel and it's what if I put letterbox list on wheel? And so that's what we're doing today. I have 175 numbers on this wheel and we're gonna pick one movie off of it but um my logic behind this and why i think it's kind of cool is that um since there is just it could be any of the 175 things on the list um a i know for a fact that everything on the list is cool and i like and i can talk about but b i can't um sort of beat myself up over the fact that like I can't, I can't really like plan for it, you know? So it's like, I kind of have to be just ready to talk about any film that I uh, love because I love everything on that list because I made the list because it is the top 10% of all films that I've seen. Do you understand the concept of the video yet? But yeah, I'm just kind of uh, interested to see how this uh, kind of goes. And I don't really know if this is gonna be a series, if this is just gonna be like um, an on and off thing until I can sort of force myself to make more actual videos because the reality is like letterbox lottery i should be making that a bi-weekly thing right that should not take as much effort as it does but i mean it, it's just when you spend months literal months working on a video and it gets like less than 100 views it's just like why should i even bother and then there's like the batman thing which like that was supposed to be like oh easy unscripted thing just cut it together really quick and that ended up taking you know like not weeks but it still took like probably 10 hours to edit let's just say and so it's but it's still like you know that gets less than 50 views in the week that it's been up so it's like it, it's demoralizing is my point and uh that is why i need to make videos like this so that i can sort of upload videos without having the pressure of making it uh good because i know that the people that watch the videos that take two weeks would also watch the videos that take two days. So for now, I think for me, I need to focus on making the two day videos so that I can get back in the um, sort of momentum building so I can go back to the two week videos, two month videos. Um, in fact, there is a video that without any exaggeration, I've been working on for probably two years so um, I want to finish that in 2022 and I said that in 2021 as well but this time I really mean it because we're doing 
big wheel movies. So this could be the start of a series, um, or this could be a one-off experiment. But either way, let's get started. So my uh, 64 gigabyte SD card just uh, happened to fill. As I said, let's get started. So um, that should be a lesson to you kids to always clear out your old videos on the SD card when you're done. Anyway, I think uh, I'm just gonna like edit this to pretend that it's like a continuous thing. So just like, I'm so, this is gonna be crazy guys. What's, what's gonna happen next? That's my thumbnail shot. All right, so let's just go ahead and spin the wheel. Um, 56, okay. So that's gonna be pretty early on. Okay, 50, 55. Oh my god! Mardi Gras! Mardi Gras! <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I gotta show off, I gotta show off my, my thing. I gotta show off the thing. So this, um, so this is in my top 50, and the reason I got so excited about it is because I have, I can do my show and tell a little bit, um, this is the um, America Lost and Found BBS box set uh, of the Criterion Collection. And in this little box is a film called Easy Rider. But um, it's also just in the collection on its own. It is spine number 545 for those wondering. I know some of you, as, as soon as I clicked on Easy Rider, you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. But you know, it, it, I just wish I knew what spine number this was in the Criterion Collection. Well, <laughs> lucky for you, um, I got it. I got it right here. This box set um, is one of the coolest things ever, I think. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into it because I could talk about BBS. Hello? Hello? This is so awesome. I love being a professional video filmmaker. And uh, this is independent filmmaking. So um, if, if you don't like um, all, of the, all of the kinks in this, um, you know, this is just part of the independent um, filmmaking movement. Speaking of independent filmmaking, let's talk about Easy Rider. So Easy Rider, this is actually so insane because I could, this is something I legitimately could talk about for 30 minutes just with no preparation. So this is very cool that I got this as the um, first thing for this. So um, Easy Rider is a 1969 film uh, directed and co-starring Dennis Hopper, um, who is notable for being a very funny man. Um, this is, in my opinion, one of the most important films of all time in terms of film history, and specifically American film history. Um, I'm not an expert, um, I'm just a child with a Letterboxd account, but <laughs> you should still take me seriously, I assure you. This is a film which stars Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper as, um, two... Uh, epic hippie guys with epic motorcycles because this is really you know at the, at its core this is just an epic motorcycle movie for for cool guys that like that like that like that like drugs and and motorcycles that's really the that that is the only appeal of the film that's the only reason I like the film um, everything I say beyond this point is a joke it is satire ever those that's it that's it surface level that's all you need. That's the only reason I watch film. So it's hard to even like start talking about the film because I could just go and there's, there's a lot of stuff um, behind the scenes and its legacy and what it meant and the actual um, film industry. That's a, that's, a, that's a professional word that I can throw out there. Um, but basically this is a very good film. It is um, very much an independent film which is kind of the main thing in terms of its legacy. It kind of, um, I argue that it sort of single-handedly ushered in, or it paved the way for the new Hollywood movement to begin, which I guess I should explain, like old new Hollywood, these movements, these ideas. Um, basically the late 60s sort of brought um, a sort of grinding halt to um, film in terms of being a contemporary art form. There was definitely sort of um, a distinction between the studio big movies and the actual reality, which was not being reflected in any of the 
actual contemporary art. And so Easy Rider is sort of a huge um, milestone in independent filmmaking in that it was made basically outside of the larger studio system. Um, it was not BBS, technically, it was the earlier iteration of that, which was um, Raybert Productions? Raybert? Was that right? Yeah, Raybert Productions, which uh, sort of eventually became BBS, um, which is sort of what this box set is all about, the sort of um, independent surge of that came from this. Uh, Five Easy Pieces, Drive He Said, Safe Place, Last Picture Show, King of Marvin Gardens, as well as Head, which came before Easy Rider, kind of its own thing, kind of not. Uh, but basically this film reflected the counterculture sentiments throughout the United States of America at the time and ended up being um, a wildly successful film. Uh, financially, not really critically, I guess, but just based in the box office and in terms of uh, just culture and just the influence that it had. And so basically it sort of, uh, I argue, I've always sort of viewed it as it sort of opened the gates for um, new the new wave of filmmaking to sort of begin and it all sort of sims back to Easy Rider. And so in the years to come, that sort of new Hollywood movement with, you know, the Coppola, Scorsese, just all of these new, great, uh, independent style filmmakers, the great Cassavetes, of course. But um, I kind of view a lot of that as stemming back to Easy Rider. Not to say that, like, The Godfather wouldn't exist without Easy Rider, but I think Easy Rider has its influence, not just in terms of the filmmaking, like I think other, a lot of other like world cinema movements sort of like is an evolution in like the style of filmmaking and I'm not necessarily saying that, in fact I think Easy Rider's style is definitely a lot more derivative of some like European like French styles of filmmaking, but um, in terms of the actual like way the film was made, um, which might not make any sense i don't know what i'm saying but it it was an important movie <laughs> but all of that is sort of outside of the film itself basically the ideas of the film can be summarized in the tagline which i really like the tagline a lot um a man went looking for america and couldn't find it anywhere it's very very um very mysterious very sort of um direct very powerful um, and I think that really I don't want to go too much into the plot because it's not much of a really like heavy plot driven story um, as it's such an independent film it didn't really have much of a script didn't really have much um, pre-production planning um, I think by any measures it's definitely a, a bold film a lot of the things that um, it tries to do um, especially in the idea of a road trip movie, not very uh, plot driven outside of just uh, going forward and having things happen along the way. Um, just a point A to point B type of thing and it works thematically very well, it works tonally very well, it is a perfect film by most measures. I think that it, it's uh, very, very... Uh, but I think um, a lot of it comes down to Dennis Hopper as a writer, director, actor. I think he really is sort of a, um, well, he's become kind of a meme, I guess, um, at least in, in my my friend's circles, he's a bit of a meme, but uh, I, I think he, re he really is um, kind of great. Um, I, I think if, if you watch some of the behind the scenes stuff, you can definitely see that there is like reason behind the madness. The freedom to me in the movie uh, is about uh, people talking about freedom, not being free, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but telling you that they're free mm -hmm. and telling you that they're free. I mean, they tell you that, that they're free and that everything's great, but they're really a herd, they're a group, mm -hmm. and they all dress alike and they talk alike and they look alike. They love alike, they hate alike, they're all alike. And they talk about individual freedom, the individual, freedom of the individual. They're not free individuals, they're a herd who are constricted and hate anything, any kind of change. It's not just, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna smoke real life weed on, on front of the camera and no one's gonna do nothing about it. It's like he actually 
has um, a vision in mind and he is working really hard to um, let things play out naturally as well as sort of trying to focus things um, to make the film that he wants to make. And really, at the end of the day, that's kind of what uh, independent filmmaking is all about. That's what he really worked towards and what he sort of helped pioneer. Um, I mean, he didn't do anything single-handedly, obviously. Um, I think in terms of writing, it's, it's not really a, a written film, obviously. It's an, it's an actor's film. Um, but his direction is still strong, um, which I guess leads me to the cinematography. Laszlo Kovacs, just another sort of strangely like legendary uh person ghostbusters <laughs> paper moon uh it, it's it's this very strange film and how it all sort of fell together which i guess um the main thing that i haven't even brought up uh it uh has one of the greatest side performances of all time they they they, they have got bases all over the world now you know they've been coming here ever since 1946 when the scientists first started bouncing radar beams off of the moon. And they have been living and working among us in vast quantities ever since. The government knows all about them. Oh, I, I, mean, I mean, truly, uh, the film is... Not that it's saved by him, but I, I definitely... I, I look forward to that part more than um, a lot of the first half of the movie. But um, that's another part of its legacy, I guess. Um, probably... <laughs> Probably actually its biggest one was that Jack Nicholson was really thinking about retiring or quitting acting um, in the late 60s and with Easy Rider's success it sort of uh, propelled his career forward. So just sort of um, imagine for a moment a world where Jack Nicholson stopped acting in the late 60s, which he hadn't really been in much uh, before that. I mean he never really um, had a, a real breakout. Um, until Easy Rider, although he does show up um, both on screen and behind the camera um, in the other film in the set, uh, <laughs> the, the, the masterpiece that is Head. But yeah, I mean, even just even just in this box set, he's literally in every single film except the Last Picture Show. Bogdanovich. Peter Bogdanovich. <laughs> Mr. Bogdanovich. I didn't even mention him when I talked about New Hollywood. Ah. Oh man, he that's that's the most like topical guy. I can't believe it. Yeah, that's that's disrespectful, honestly. I'm sorry. I apologize. What the, the video has been derailed. Okay, so the um the, the 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 camera has um filled two SD cards worth of footage apparently. Um this should be a lesson to all of you to clean up those those SD cards and not just do it think we'll do it later and then when you need them they're they're full so it's very cool this is a very very awesome uh, way to continue the video which I'm just going to do it like this I literally don't even care because I love Easy Rider so if this was any other film I would have stopped I would have thrown thrown the laptop across the room punched the camera right in the right in right in the aperture um, that was a filmmaking term. Uh, your vocab quiz is next week. Don't forget about that. Um, I don't even know what I'm doing. I just, I just love Easy Rider so much, man. Um, oh, okay. Um, yeah, this is, this is falling off the rails. <laughs> okay, it's fine. So, Easy Rider, um, basically, Jack Nicholson, uh, Dennis Hopper, greatest man ever. Um, this actually ties into something I was talking about earlier in the video, but I don't want to spoil that. But, uh, basically, Easy Rider, uh, Louisiana, the whole plot of the movie I haven't even just talked about yet because I'm an actual idiot that, um, is dumb and stupid. But basically, uh, Peter Fonda, Dennis Hopper, uh, do big drug deal, get lots of money, and they decide take motorcycle, go across the country to Louisiana for Mardi Gras. And basically that is the entire plot of the movie. They go from point A to point B uh, with the two hippies on collision with, on a, on a collision course with small town prejudices. That's the description. I'm reading the letterbox. Hang on. I'm reading the, um, the letterbox of the film. Um, but yeah, um, I love, <laughs> I love how I, I spend so much time preparing for the video and then I end up just holding it like, like an actual like four-year-old talking about their, their Fortnite review, Among Us review. 
um, but yeah guys uh, Easy Rider is a good movie um, I like it even though it's not as good as Free Guy <laughs> yeah so e Easy Rider is a good movie I think in my opinion um, it's cool it's awesome uh, check it out I do recommend 10 out of 10 I don't even know what I'm doing anymore this is so sad I, I was so excited because I was gonna talk about Easy Rider but now this is all falling apart I spent so much time setting up the camera framing it perfectly in a little microphone in there like a like a cool DJ um, anyway uh, point is Easy Rider uh, most uh, important movie ever made Dennis Hopper most important man in the history Jack Nicholson funniest funniest person funniest dude uh, I yeah um, also watch the last movie uh, Dennis Hopper's second oh this was his first film by the way Dennis Hopper uh, directed the film and was really good at in the film as well this is the I think this is actually the worst review I've ever done I think this improv bit is um, not working because I'm awful at speaking like I can't even read I can't even read a script how am I supposed to come up with a script and then articulate it just off the top of my head it doesn't even make any sense I'm, I'm not a very um, smart pr video producer I should edit other people's videos. see now I have it angled so there's no glare in, the, in my lenses but I look like I'm kind of I'm, I'm being being a bit sassy I'm gonna tell you tell you how it is hey hey this movie is good and you're gonna go watch it because I have to look down to keep the glare out of my glasses now now I can look look sassy and have a glare how about that so now you're gonna <laughs> I'm not none of this is getting cut I'm gonna put this whole thing this is gonna be an unedited video um, too hot for TV uh, Steve-O compilation but yeah um, basically I haven't, why am I saying basically? Like, I'm, that's not a thing. Like, I've never done that before, but in this video, I'm saying it like every other word. Um, Easy Rider. Uh, luckily, I'm not too beat up over not accurately describing it because there might be a video in the future that um, discusses it um, in a little bit more, in a little bit more, um, a little bit more depth. This is, this is foul. <laughs> but thank you all for watching this video. I promise that it'll get more professional in the future um, and I can't wait to spend the next week editing this I was gonna do a bro fist but that's so it's not even funny anymore it's not funny anymore none of that nothing everything's changed this is actually like the worst video on my entire channel I'm just gonna talk like this yeah the um the video is over now um thank you for watching and if you subscribe you'll get a free leg of ham glazed ham leg in the mail in your house leave your address in the comment leave the keys under the rug we'll do the rest <laughs>